grace in him is passed on to us. His righteousness is passed on to us as well, and that flows into us. He that abideth in me, and I in him. Can you see what is called the interpenetration? We are in him, and he is in us. That is, we are kind of, it's like we dwell in him. He abides in us as well. And with that interpenetration, he has taken our sin, and we have taken his righteousness. That is the relationship that Christ has with his people. That the branch has of the tree. And then it says in that verse 5, it says, The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. What does that say? That says, you are not just to get converted and then go back home. You remain with Christ. And you follow Christ all the way through. That as you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you remain, you abide in Him. It tells us in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. See the kind of relationship that has now ensued. The kind of relationship that now we enjoy as children of God. As branches in the vine. In Romans chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 4. Wherefore my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. That ye shall be married to another. You see that? It says the old covenant is dead. The uh, Mosaic law is dead. And the hold of the Mosaic institution, all that is broken. That's what is saying there, that we are now brethren. We are not members of the family of God. And it says you have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. It is Christ surrendering his body to be crucified. And then to be buried and to rise for justification. That sets us free from the old mosaic law. And now it says here is the new relationship. Here is the relationship we have with the Lord Jesus Christ now as our saviour. As our Lord, as a Redeemer, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. It tells us we now have a new relationship, and that relationship with Christ as Savior and Lord and Redeemer. And that relationship is to bring forth fruit unto God. It tells us more about that relationship in John. Let's look at John. We're looking at you from chapter 8. John chapter 8, reading from verse 30. How do you come into this relationship? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn away from your sin. Have definite assurance. Those sins are washed away and taken away. That you not belong to the Lord. You are forgiven. You are converted. And you are brought to the Lord. And that conversion, that salvation, that's what brings the relationship, the intimacy between you and the Lord. It is that believing that turns your life around. Before you believed, the Lord Jesus said, You have your father the devil. But now after you have believed, he says, I go to my father, I go to your father. Do you see that change? You don't belong to sin anymore, to Satan anymore, to yourself anymore. Now you belong to him. There is a new relationship that has now been formed by that faith in Christ. Look at John chapter 8 verse 30. As he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Uh, that, that's, that's what brings the relationship. You believe on the Lord. You believe this word is word of the necessity of repentance. You believe this word is word on the absolute necessity of taking him as your personal savior. You believe this word is word that if you continue with him, you're going to spend eternity with him. And because of believing that word of repentance and that word of faith in Christ and that word of continuing with the Lord, that's how you became disciples. And that's how you continue as disciples. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. I pray you'll continue. 
I said you will continue. John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. I was talking to your disciples, remember? And Judas already had gone out to those Pharisees and Sadducees. Judas separated from the Lord and joined himself unto the Pharisees and the Sadducees that wanted to overturn the ministry of Christ. That wanted to destroy the life of Christ. When you find somebody like that who abandons Christ, abandons the church, and then he goes to join himself with the people that want to overthrow, overturn, destroy the ministry of Christ and the ministry of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. You find some, somebody like that, that's Judas Iscariot. Now the disciples might be afraid. Now he's going to those people. What are they going to do to us? And Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God. Nothing will ever happen except by the wise permission of the Almighty God. Anything he allows is for your good. All things work together for good. For them who are the called of God, those who are called according to his purpose. And because you know God is in charge. No, the Pharisees are not in charge. The Sadducees are not in control. Judas does not have the final say. And the enemies of the progress of the gospel, they don't have the final say. Disciples, you can rest, rest your mind. And then you understand that all the circumstances and the storm, they don't have the final say. God is still in control. And because of the disciples, ye believe in God, believe also in me. That's what brings the relationship. That intimate relationship that a person says, I can now rest. Let the waves roar. Let the seas roar. And let the world be turbulent. And let Judas go and meet whatever he wants to meet, whoever he wants to meet. I can rest because I believe in God. And I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that forms the relationship. Look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, At that day shall ye know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. You see the relationship. He said, the way I can describe my own relationship with God, the Almighty, the Heavenly Father, is that I am in the Father. Relationship. My Father and I were not separated. The Pharisees cannot separate us. The Sadducees cannot separate us. Christ and the Father. I am in the Father. Now he goes on and says, And ye in me, and I in you. Ye in me, I in you. There's a relationship right there. And that is the beginning of fruit bearing. We cannot just begin to bear fruit because he says, Without me ye can do nothing. It is that association. It is that connection. It is that intimate relationship that brings the fruit. Look at verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We're actually going to live. Hope that you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our bottom, our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity. Those people who are in need of healing and the power by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Say one more time, say, oh, 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 Lord.